I don't know whether Dr. Sarah Bainan uh, would agree with us actually <laughs> having the fly spray out. She's going to join us now to uh, help us avoid getting stung this summer. Welcome, lovely to see you. Thank welcome, you. Welcome. Um, why has this been dubbed the summer of bugs? I think it's because we've had a very warm winter and quite often after a warm winter we'll see lots of bugs emerging the following spring but there are lots of other reasons as well so it's really difficult to pinpoint why there are lots of bugs around at any time and we try really hard to find an answer but you know with so many things are changing at the moment we're as humans we're moving around more uh, the climate's changing and we're using different pesticides and then the bugs are becoming resistant to the pesticides as well which means they don't kill them anymore so it's a whole host of reasons well one of the headlines says double bed bugs Bed bugs terrify me more than any. The <laughs> thought of something actually being in my bed biting me while I sleep is just horrible. Yeah, so bed bugs are a type of insect and right. they're, they're great, they're fascinating. The problem is, is really? they come into conflict with us. See, yes. we're one species and we see other species that come into conflict with us as a pest. Mm. Bed bugs, they've got a hypodermic needle attached to the end of their nose. Great. They then stab that into you and suck your juices out. So a bit, oh, and it, I mean, bit it like makes sense. A bit, look at that. So, so like, a, like a mozzie, really. Would it get it out the same way as a mozzie? They do. They've both got these sucking mouth parts. And do they leave little marks on you? Like, I mean, can you, if you've been bitten by a bed, 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 bed bug, goodness Difficult me. to say. It is quite difficult to say. Would you end up with like little, like a mosquito bite on your body? You do. It can sometimes be a delayed reaction. So it can come a couple of days later, which is often the problem to try and work out where you've been bitten because you don't know quite when you've been bitten if the if the rash comes up a couple of days later what have you got here these are some bed bugs in here Living and we've ones. got oh. some under the microscope are they alive they are alive oh my goodness we, keep the lid on that we kept the lid on those we did have another escapee earlier but oh, great we one of these <laughs> and you can see there are little characteristic black dots and rust marks around here that's how you know you've got bed bugs right. what, where, what is that where's the oh there it is Okay. Can. Hold on a minute. Let me just get. Let me just get that for you. Well, what are See. the little rust marks then? So they regurgitate their blood. The blood that they've sucked from humans, they'll spit it out. So you get little rust marks of blood on your sheets, as well as their droppings as well. Ooh, Let's so have a look under the microscope. Okay. They're quite big, aren't they? I mean, they're not exactly little things. No, you're right. So they can be up to about five millimeters long, and that's like if you imagine <sighs> numbers on your credit card, <laughs> about the size of that, and. They may be called bed bugs, yeah. but they actually live in all the crevices so in your you, house. How do you get rid of them? What do you do if you've got them? Well, the most important thing is just call in a pest control company. So bed bugs, if they establish a population in your house, they're really difficult to get rid of. Are they? But the issue is, is there's quite often a taboo. You know, we think bed bugs are associated with dirty households, people not cleaning properly. That's not the case. What, so bed, you get bed bugs in a clean bed? You can. You can get bed bugs. Anywhere, Are they in like nits where they go to clean hair? Do bed bugs like mm. things clean? No. Not necessarily, but they, they won't choose clean over dirty or dirty over they're clean. They're, they're so there. make sure you tell people. That's the first oh. thing. You what, know, your neighbours? You tell your neighbours. Exactly. Really? That's the most important thing. Oh, you'll never thing. believe it. We've got an infestation of bed bugs. Absolutely. And especially if you're living in communal housing or blocks of flats, bed bugs can crawl through into next door. So you all need to target the treatment okay. at the same time. Oh, can we talk about ticks? I feel ticks. like that's going to be something nicer. Well, so that better <laughs> is that better territory for you? <laughs> no, 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 see, bed bugs are fine, they don't spread disease. Ticks, on the other hand, do. Lyme disease. Lyme disease, absolutely, which can be pretty nasty. Let's try and get this I one can... under the microscope. Nope, that's our flea. They are horrible, horrible looking Let's things. A ticking see. time bomb. Yes, yeah, so ticks are so ticks are more closely related to spiders than I'm insects. I'm really it, struggling yeah. trying to find it here. Let's see. Where are you, Mr. Where Tick? Where are we? Let's, let's try this again. We're just trying to find it underneath the micro. Tell us, there tell we us about go. Oh, that's the problem. He's too big. Right, one tick. It looks like a sort of broad bean with a head and legs. Perfect. So this is a tick that will have fed, so it's engorged its body with blood. They can be anything from the size of a full stop up to about this size, which you say broad bean pea size, really. And the main issue is, as we say, they spread Lyme disease. So they will be in woodland areas. Mm. They'll be feeding on deer. Now, we're starting to think that ticks are maybe increasing in the UK, but we don't have evidence of that, despite what everyone's saying. But if they are increasing, it'll be because increases in deer population. Right. And, of course, we're all walking our dogs in wooded parks. And they pick them up, they go into them. And they go into us. So you want to tuck your trousers into your socks. You want to look really cool as you go walking your dog. And afterwards, you want to make sure that you check your clothing, brush your clothing off. 
and check your crevices because they like hiding in crevices. Ah, oh, look, there's how, one there. Look how at How quickly this. can it get into a crevice then if you're out for a walk? Oh no, they so they they actually sense the carbon dioxide that we're breathing out yeah. and they'll hook onto us with their front legs. So as they'll just as you walk the, past the grass, grass or something like that. They Absolutely. bury their heads into your skin. They do indeed and so then you've they just got that bulbous bottom bit sticking getting out. Getting fatter and fatter and the most important thing with ticks and Lyme disease is you need to get that tick off you within 24 hours because they are very unlikely to spread Lyme disease to you if you get it off How in do you 24 get it out? hours. So, you can either use a pair of, of sharp tweezers. Don't, 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 does it leave the head in there? That's the most important thing. So you need the tweezers to go right down next to the skin and then you need to pull it out by the head. Yeah. Don't pull it out by the body because if you compress the body, it can spurt all the Lyme disease bacteria into you. Oh my goodness. Otherwise, just, pick tools from vets. What about, so what about rubbing something like Vaseline over the top of no, it? No, no, well, don't, don't do, do that. that. No. Why? So again, any stress to the tick can cause it to regurgitate its food into you and regurgitate the bacteria into you. I used to put Vaseline on the ones that went on our cat. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. Oh God, well now we know. She's dead now. I was going to say, is it still alive? <laughs> <laughs> um, Killer Hornets up next, that's cheery. Right. Hornets from hell, says the Daily Star. Hornets, okay, so we've got Asian Hornets coming into the UK, potentially. It's quite likely they will come into the UK. And they're about a couple of inches long, big black hornets, yellow-orange faces, a yellow band on their abdomen and a little yellow band at the top. Now, the issue with these hornets is that they're quite aggressive, so they will sting more readily than our wasps. And they don't and die hornets. when they sting? No. So... It's, I think they get a really bad reputation because we're, we're, we're hearing that hornets are killing people. And bees. And um, Yeah, absolutely. But you see, the thing is with, the, with the, a hornet, if you got stung with uh, one of these Asian hornets or one of our own hornets, mm. and we get hornets where I live out in Oxfordshire, and they are monster things yeah. when they come. They're scary and they are a bit... You go anywhere near an S and they're, they're right at you. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm allergic, as we've said before on here, so, so I'd be in big trouble. But the people who've died, not necessarily because it was that specific hornet sting, it, it was anaphylactic shock and they'd have got it from if it had been a bee or another wasp. That's exactly it, yes. Yeah, so they're not very dangerous themselves, it's just if you have an allergic reaction but to them. But they are more dangerous to our population of honeybees. That's the problem. So they will actually kill our honeybees and our honeybees are in massive decline anyway. So it could be one extra threat coming in. So much so that there is an alert gone out amongst beekeepers to keep an eye out for them because they will destroy them. Absolutely. So you can actually get in touch with the non-native species secretariat if you think that you have we a hornet nest. We have a secretariat? Nest. We do. do we, we do indeed. And then they will actually come out to identify if it is this Asian hornet yeah. um, and then get rid of it pretty quickly. So you need professional help if you spot Very one of those. Very much do, yes. So okay. just, just to explain the difference once again between our hornet and this new... Asian hornet. Asian the Asian hornet. hornet is much blacker, so it's pr pr predominantly black body, yellow head, yellow ends to the legs, but otherwise very black. OK, yeah. can we discuss super fleas? OK, fleas. I think fleas are great. That's probably not the best way you to start that, is it? might be on your it? own with that. Yeah, but, OK, if you had a flea that was human size, it would be able to jump over the Eiffel Tower. I mean, what, what an athlete. It is, it is impressive in that way, but they are a pain. They are. Um, so, again, it's difficult. Fleas are more of a nuisance. They, they can spread some diseases. They will, they'll spread tapeworm and they can spread some, um, some fevers amongst cats and are, as well. Is there an invasion of super fleas, <sighs> uber fleas? Not really. So people say a super flea or an uber flea is one that is resistant to our chemical um, pesticides right. to kill them. There isn't any actual known resistance to those pesticides yet. It's very likely to happen though. So it's really important that if you are... If you're treating your pets for fleas, you want to keep them on a real tight flea control program. Most importantly, get advice from the vets mm. and follow their recommendations. And if you can, change the chemical you use every six months and that will delay the development oh, of these super fleas. Oh, it just means that we're constantly kept a bit scared, doesn't it? And the papers keep us a bit scared. You remember all the story about the spider the, mm. that, uh, yes, that was going to right. wipe us all out? That's all gone a bit quiet now, hasn't it? I think that's the problem is we do. We, we are, we're scared of invertebrates, of bugs. And the majority of them don't do us any harm at all. And it's just a few species that come into conflict with us. Just for the last 30 seconds, I know you've got a bug farm okay. in West Wales. Um, okay, and you bought a... some of these bugs up. Okay. Oh, you're opening them up? That's yeah, great. Open them up. We had, we had oh, one escape God, earlier. It's, oh, it's all right, it's all right. Hang on. This is, let's go here first. 
Holly? Yeah, hi, hi, hi. I don't like it when he just tried to get out. There we go. Would you like to hold one? No, go on. Wait, no, British no, no, gong no, beetle. No, if it weren't not. for no, these, I really, no, I really don't want to. I'm fine. I'm just sure? watch. I'm good at watching. Okay, <laughs> if it weren't for these, the whole of the UK, well, an area double the size of London would be covered in poo. These really? guys break it down, put it into the ground. Free fertilizer. Good for them. Good for them. Do you want to see the whip spider very quickly? Oh, uh, does it does it have stings on it? Because nope, I'm nope. allergic. Can, no, we're okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hold it, just in case. Look at that. Look at him looking right at us there. Look at that. He's there showbiz go. bugs. Okay, down you go. go. And that's right. The spidery thing. This is a whip <gasps> spider. Look at him. So this isn't actually a spider. Uh, this is an amblypygid, and you can see these are its mouth parts used for grabbing prey in caves and forests in, in Africa. That and so your bug farm is in Wales, yeah? It is, West Wales, in St David's, where well, we just... teach people oh, that about the importance. <laughs> you should just have a look at, let's uh, just have a look at him that. whilst we're in there. Whoa. So that's our giant millipede. All of these really important. Without bugs, the world would not be as we know it today. Thank you. Good. Very much indeed. Magic.